Hey friends, one here, welcome back. Today, we'll be doing something a little bit different and very, very special because I know for a fact that many of us, we didn't just grow up playing games. We also love checking out those incredible gaming magazines, whether we're talking about EGM, a Game Pro, PlayStation, Game Informer. I thought, hey, it'd be pretty awesome to actually just go live on stream and just grab a random magazine. We can check it out, look at the games, the reviews, the ads, and maybe even check out some things that never actually came out. So in this edition, we're going to be going back to 2003 and checking out this edition of a PlayStation magazine. So if you like what I do, make sure to subscribe and follow me at twitch.tv slash Mr. Player Juan. This magazine here, I've had it for a couple months. I actually got this sealed on eBay. This was completely sealed and I opened it this morning because it had a playable demo for PS2 and I wanted to make sure it was working. Uh, I'll show you the disc in a second. But yeah, nice reference in the ice tea. Yeah, you got to put ice tea whenever you put a retro reads or law and order inspired thing. You got to do that, right? But let me show you what's on the menu today. Boom! This lovely uh, PlayStation magazine from summer or September, I should say, uh, 2013. And it actually did come with a demo disc. Now, I freaked out when I first opened it because it was stuck to the magazine. And when I say stuck, I'm not talking about the front. I'm talking about the back. So the back was completely like, uh, you can see maybe some scratches as of me trying to fix it, but it actually had markings of the magazine all across this side. And then I was looking up online different ways to fix it. And uh, one of the ways they said, like, look, WD-40 is not the ideal one, but look, I tried vine vinegar, I tried everything, and it wouldn't work. So inevitably, I did go down the WD-40 route, and it actually worked. I just sprayed a little bit, used a Q-tip, it all went out smoothly. Uh, I triple wiped it with a microfiber cloth, and I put it on my PS2, and it actually worked. So uh, very happy at the fact that I was able to revive it. Yeah. It fully works because the way that I was able to make sure you can actually see some markings from the glue from the magazine. Let's see. Oh, you see that? You see that? Imagine that, but it was on this side and it was like flat out paint. So what I did is because the PS2 that I have has a built in hard drive. If I could, if I was able to burn this disc 100% into the into the console, then I knew it would work, and it actually worked. So I was able to uh, salvage this. But when I saw this, like the whole reason I bought this magazine sealed was because it had the demo. So when I saw that, I'm like, oh come on, man, you can't you can't give that to me. You can't do that. But luckily, it's working. So in the future, we'll be uh, taking a look at that. So, does any did anybody ever uh, get these uh, PlayStation magazines growing up? At least for me, I think I only bought these a couple of times, and it wasn't subscription based. I think I bought this. Uh, oh my goodness, Yannick with the twelve month resub has it has it been a Juan year already? Juan year it has been, my friend, Mr. McNulty. Welcome, you're just in time. Check it out. Check it out. We haven't even opened up the magazine. I did open up the uh, packaging because this was sealed, people. So this magazine, it should look beautiful, should look basically uh, brand new. I used to have those mailed to my house for two years. So I had a lot of that. I had Game Pro, Electronic Gaming Monthly, and Game Informer, but I was never subscribed to this one. The regular price of this one was $9. So this is actually a pretty expensive magazine, right? Because I feel like... Game Pro was like six or seven bucks. I actually have some Game Pro Max back there, but I feel like that was more or less the price. Um, this was a lot more expensive. And the demo disc that comes with this actually has Ryan, get this, it has a Silent Hill 3 demo. Oh yeah, it's probably got to be because of that. So uh, what we're going to be doing is just going down memory lane, checking out the magazine, from the cover, uh, the, the ads. I think the ads are actually my favorite thing to check out. And uh, remember, we're going back to 2003 with this. So we really are going down uh, memory lane. From the top, you can see that the demo actually has Soul Calibur 2, Silent Hill 3, Sphinx, 
Wolfenstein, and more. Started playing Octopath Traveler on PC. That game is so gorgeous. Yeah, I actually want to download it on, on our Xbox. It's, a, it's available via Game Pass now. Like, that was kind of like a stealth announcement, right? Like, that just kind of, like, happened out of nowhere. That was pretty awesome. And uh, I actually own this game. Did anybody ever play Medal of Honor Rising Sun? I think it's one of the most underrated uh, first-person shooters on PS2. I kind of want to do a video about this game eventually. Uh, because I rented it one time after I think I played Medal of Honor A Light Assault on PC. And I was not expecting much. But um, I was very surprised. Like, it had online. It looked great. It ran great. And I think it's uh, available on, on GameCube, Xbox, and PS2. I think that's the usual thing. 50% off on Steam. Damn, that's a great price. But yeah, uh, James, this is a damn good game. I actually got it. Uh, I was able to get it in 2017 in Chicago. I got my copy of this one. I played it way back in the day but through rental. But I went to a, a thrift store in Chicago and they had a copy there. Uh, Champions of Noroth is freaking awesome. I still need to get that game because I have the sequel. I have uh, uh, Return to Arms. But this is one of the more expensive PS2 games. So I don't actually envision me getting this. Uh, eventually, you love champions and nice. So, like, uh, maybe eventually I can stream again. Um, Return to Arms. Eventually, I would love to get a 4K camera from the top down, so that way you could really see the text. But hey, th this works, right? This works. Um, anybody that's played this Tomb Raider, you know where. Yeah, that's not. It's not a good one. Beyond Good and Evil, I've still yet to really play. Like, I played a couple hours, but that was many years ago. And I honestly don't remember a whole lot. I do have the HD edition on um, on PC, though. On 360. On 360. Soul Calibur 2, freaking amazing. And uh, we are getting some dips for those on stream. Awesome. Lovely. Right? Unfortunately. But uh, Soul Calibur 2 is freaking awesome. I actually owned... I think I eventually got all three versions, because I remember I played as Spawn on Xbox, Hihachi on PS2, and Link on GameCube, but I think I mainly owned the Xbox One, rented GameCube, and bought the PS2 one. I'm not sure, though. Played on Spanish, though. It's fun. Oh, it's... I mean, if it's a Ubisoft game, usually Ubisoft is pretty accessible with uh, language. Yeah, we're getting some dips on, on Twitch, but... Uh, the archive, this is going to be available in a full archive at Player Juan Play, so that way if anybody's interested, you can uh, check it out in uh, 1080p. So we have some uh, PS2 ads here. This is our Arc the Lad tw Twilight of the Spirits. I never played this, never played this. Yonix says, hello YouTube. Uh, did anybody ever play this? I've always wanted to play the Ark the Lad games. Uh, there's a very popular one for PS2, but it's not this one. I forget the name, though. But I always thought they looked pretty cool. Now, Freedom Fighters. Uh, this was a game that, for many years, people wanted it to be re-released, and it recently was on PC. Uh, I, this was actually, if I recall, one of the last PS2 games that I bought when the PS2 was still relevant. And I really enjoyed it. It's like a third-person shooter. So if you're a fan of like your soul comps and all that, it was all like team-based. You could you could control the like assign things to like your computer teammates and all that stuff. I don't know if anybody else played it, but I I really enjoyed this one. And I don't think it holds up all that well. I do remember playing it a couple years after, but I do think the the concept is uh, pretty cool. Same thing with like the Mercenaries game which came out on PS2 and Xbox. I thought that was a really, really good game. This is one that I've wanted to uh, get as part of my collection for a while. Sir me, well, what's happening, my friend? My neighbor across the street growing up had an Ark the Lag game. Never played it. Heard it was pretty middle-of-the-road RPG series, but I don't know. Yeah, the same thing. It's like I always knew of those games, but I can't. I can't actually share an experience with it. You know what I mean? 15 euro on stream, including soundtrack. Okay. So this one is like a four-player game, I think. 
it, it, if you notice, it's got that Left 4 Dead style before Left 4 Dead, right? It's like, oh, a lot of characters you can play as. It's like a top-down action game. I believe this is the second game in the series. Pretty sure this is not the first one. There's no peace, not even in death. Nothing lasts forever, not even the undead. That's a, it's like a very long, long ad thing. Now you know what is happening, my friend. Welcome to 2003. Which games were you all playing in 2003? For me, I think the easy answer is like SOCOM, uh, wrestling games. I wasn't playing like a whole lot of different games. I was just playing a whole lot of the same stuff around that time. Did anyone get the l shaped multi-plug? I actually got one for the PS1, but I had no friends to, to actually use it with. But it was on sale at KB Toys for like four or five bucks, so I bought it. Pokemon Ruby, my first game ever. Man, I want to get a copy of that game eventually. Oh boy. <laughs> I own this game. It's part of the, my 50 plus wrestling games. I own two copies. I own the PS2 version and I own the Xbox version. Both are equally as mediocre. I get it because of Champions. Oh, right, right, Champions. Man, that's a great game. That's a great game. Hunter the Reckoning was a pretty cool game. I want to, like, I want to dwell a lot more into 2003. I don't know why, even in the podcast that I'm involved in, it seems like we tend to go back to 2003, 2004 a lot. So I'm like, man, I got to I gotta beef up that, that uh, game collection for me. <laughs> but yeah, this game is, like, just insane. I believe it's even got the Insane Clown Posse, so uh, I guess it does make sense. Jackass meets the Squirt Circle in America's Backyard. This game actually got a sequel. It got a second game, and it was just as bad. Like, it's just so clunky. I think the potential was actually there because you're wrestling, like, on rooftops. You can dive off. Eventually, maybe I can do, like, a tiny stream or something, if anybody would be interested. Beyond Good and Evil, I know... Oh, yeah, no, uh, Beyond Good and Evil, man, I, I would love to have a uh, a copy of that game. I actually had one, but I traded it in. Oh, I love that uh, Scott the Waz video, like a, an hour and a half. It was insane when I saw the length, but I enjoyed all of it. Oh, man. This, this is going to annoy me because I really do feel like this is one of those games that I need as part of my collection. I, I, I feel like all of us... Even if you don't want a complete game collection, there's a couple of games that you're like, hmm, I need to have that one. Because I played this a whole lot with Ryan and Keith. Mainly, I think, Keith from a cast of the past. We actually owned this game and uh, played online a ton. Ape Escape 2. You know, I never played the second one. I only played a little bit of the first one. I have Beyond Good and Evil on GameCube. I feel like a lot of those types of games, I play them mainly on, on GameCube, but I'm not really sure. By the way, we sometimes get some dips on YouTube on uh, Twitch right, right now, by the way. Liberty. It is better than before, though. Beyond Good and Evil has an HD remake that is exclusive to the PS3 digital store. Just saying. But isn't the one on 360 the same? Because I do have one on 360, but I don't know if it's the same version. Yeah, this game, uh, it goes for a pretty price. I think it's like 50, 60 bucks complete. I, I don't want to read this because like it's like a spoiler of what's to come, right? I want to be surprised by the pages. So no, no. This is like the recent rebranding of a uh, sports game around that time, right? It is? Okay, okay. But yeah, I've never really been... The only sports games that I, I enjoy playing were uh, NBA games. So football, soccer, any of that. Baseball, I was never into. Great, Great Escape is based on the movie, right? Not 100% sure if it, or if it's inspired by. Played it first on PC. I tried to play the PC port of Beyond Good and Evil, but when I did... The control wasn't working. I don't remember what I was trying to use, though. Oh, right, right. And I think it was because they gave it away for free on Uplay. I think that's why. Same thing with uh, Prince of Persia. 
NBA Live 95 on SNES, my favorite. Oh, my favorite sports games have to be like the NBA Jams, Hang Time. Uh, those are freaking awesome. Yeah, this is like a third-person action game. Yeah, you can even see the MGM uh, logo. By the way, can everybody hear me good? Is the music at a reasonable volume? Let me know if I need to bump up the volume. Oh, NBA Street. I mean, we're talking about this time. I forget when NBA Street came out, but I freaking loved NBA Street. You know, NFL Blitz, I only played it a little bit in, in the arcade. Where they, they did have like a memory card slot or something, right? I think they did. Yeah, NBA Jam was the jam. Okay, uh, no, don't don't want to be spoiled. Wasn't this? No, I think I'm getting this game mixed up. This is from THQ. I never played this. Oh, but people, we got a coupon. $5 off the purchase of Alter Eco on PS2 or Xbox. Uh, it expires on October 2003, though. Am I late? Am I late on that? Kevin, look what came back, my friend. Retro Reads made a triumphant return, my friend. But yeah, uh, Kevin, um, I have a $5 off coupon at EB Games for this game. But I, I don't think if I take it to GameStop, it'll work. I would love to see somebody try that, though. I have no idea about that game. Oh, boy. Uh, Ryan, have you heard about this game? Have you heard about this one? I heard it's like a pretty cool game. It is uh, 28 March 2003. What are you talking about? Well, we did go back in time. We did go back in time. That is true. Haunting new tale. Hideous new creatures. Disturbingly detailed graphics. That's true. We are playing that this year, right, Ryan? I believe we are. Yeah. By the way, I began playing Dino Crisis. I, I'm enjoying my time with it. Wow, I'm getting lost. I am so bad at those. Yeah, no, same thing. I, I love playing these games, but I also hate them at the same time. I'm a scaredy cat, too. We are all suckers. Okay, what's going on here? Quality means nothing if the name's on the silver screen. This is uh, Alias. Yeah, Alias or whatever the hell. The series. Oh, Terminator game. I don't own this one. I do need to get this copy, though. I own another a T3 game. They actually came out with two T3 games on PS2, but I don't have a copy of this one. Very excited for that. Haven't played Silent Hill 3 since the first time like 10 years ago. Oh, damn. Yeah, that's going to be an interesting time. Game map, every PS2 game on a handy color map. Is that Jennifer Garner had a crush on her back then? Yeah, like, I, I never watched this series. I never watched Alias. So I know next and I knew of the cover, I knew of the series, but I never watched a single second. Did anybody else watch it? Capcom has a ton of these franchise hits. They did. Yeah, we're getting some dips, but once again, like it's we can't play games at this point. All we can do is just read magazines. Unfortunately, it's insane. Oh, talk, speak of the devil. Uh, Diana brought this game up. Ape Escape Two. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Sony's Phantom Game System. PSP wasn't Sony's first try at launching a handheld. If you've read uh, the magazine lately, you know that Sony plans to release PSP, a super advanced handheld system, late next year. But did you know that Sony itself uh, had a potential Game Boy killer in the works as early as five years ago? We're not talking about the crappy Pocket Station. As reported by blah 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 blah, the ET project was a completely different handheld system set into motion by CEO. It was supposed to be about the same size as the GBA, had a memory stick compatibility. You fit sticks into the designated kiosk at stores, you paid the cost of the game and downloaded the game. Wow, so this is talking about this in 2003 is actually still pretty advanced, right? I think a lot of companies obsessed about this whole concept that you could go into like a GameStop, put something in and download a game. I think that was very common. Like I always read about them doing something like this and it never officially happened. It never officially happened, right? But 
there were a lot of rumors about this eventually happening because like I think I read something about that even with the N64. A lot of those rumors weren't even real, right? But you would often hear about them. Series was good, but got watered down a few seasons in. Okay. Never knew about that. Man, I miss these takes, uh, take to the bathroom type magazines. Yeah, like, I mean, that. hey, that's what magazines were for pretty much back in the day, right? Let's see here. Uh, so why didn't we ever see that? They put all their efforts into basically the PS2. Yeah, the Pocket Station, we actually saw a video about this on a previous stream, but it never saw the light of day in North America. Yeah, the Sony memory sticks, like, that technically happened, but that's not anything to brag about, to brag about right? Let's see here. And it's unfortunate, like, I don't think people think of the PSP as, like, a successful device, even though it did sell well. I should check the grocery store next time. Do gaming magazines still exist? They do. There's, like, retro gaming magazines. Like, there's new magazines of old stuff. Uh, there's stuff like that. Uh, I believe GamePro or, or... Man, I don't know, actually. I don't know. I really don't know. Don't be looking at that, Ryan. Don't be looking at that. Matt No. 4. I think it's like... Didn't like N64 get up until like Matt No. 3 or something ridiculous like that? 80 million units sold by the PSP uh, in its lifetime. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty freaking awesome. GameStop still puts out their magazine physically... But its news articles are outdated by the time you get it. Yeah, it's got to be especially difficult now, considering how often everything changes, right? Okay, we got even more ads. Enhanced online play. Ooh. What's this? In addition to the next Splinter Cell, other Tim Clancy games suddenly have our attention. Ghost Recon 2. Rainbow Six Three. I never played. I I, I barely played uh, Tom Clancy's games aside from Vegas, Siege, um, Splinter Cell. Obviously, I played that. But man, I'm having a hard time figuring out which ones I I actually played. Yeah. Uh, this uh, Freaky Flyers. This is this one right? Yeah, there it is. You know, this is bad placement, I'm just going to say, because it's like you would expect the, the name of the game to be here, but it's like in this little corner here. Never played this one, though. Is this like a Diddy, Diddy's, uh, D Diddy Kong Racing, like the flying part or something? Uh, I think we all we are all nostalgic for this trilogy, right? I think we can all relate to like, PS2, Xbox, GameCube. That's, like, amazing about it. Oh, yeah. I, I love the... Like, the ads were not the thing I thought I was going to enjoy the most going back to these magazines, but they definitely are what, I, what I'm most excited about. Ghost Recon, it's good. The old ones. Yeah, like, I, I barely played them. Making games in America. Interesting. So, like, a map of different developers... Valve in Washington, Chemco, Sucker Punch, uh, Maryland, and Bethesda. I've actually walked by Bethesda's offices. Florida, EA Tiburon, Epic Games in uh, North Carolina, Raven Software in Wisconsin. A lot of California, 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 Texas, Utah. See here, what was more fascinating? Oh yeah, we got that. I played the very first Ghost Recon on the OG Xbox, but that the only that's the only Tom Clancy's game I ever tried. Man, I, I gotta go back to those. A console generation tier list could be fun. Not a single system, but comparing each generation. Ooh. Oh man. I, I, I feel like see that list I would feel a lot more comfortable about actually ranking. Cause like all of you know we did that console tier ranking. And even to this day, I don't feel comfortable with how I would rank. However, 
I feel I think I would feel a lot stronger about generations. I, I like that idea, Mr. McNulty. See, not only are you, are you amazing, you're pretty smart, man. You're pretty smart. And man, I, I have some strong opinions about that. If anything, we should even do something like that for the podcast as well. That'd be pretty cool. Oh, yeah. The most questionable addition to a Soul Calibur game. The man with no weapons in a weapon-based game. Yeah. Batman Dark Tomorrow. This will never come out. In March, the game was finally released for Xbox GameCube. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Th this game did come out. I think I remember the box art. I never played it, though. May draws what's happening, my friend. Yeah, it, it's tricky, though, because it's like... I feel like those are the three generations. Like the... It's like the sixth, the fifth, and the fourth generation. I think that's right. Because I think PS3 seventh generation. Don't quote me on that. But I think those three gens would be the, like the main ones. When PC2. Uh, PC2? Do they still make the Tekken game? They do because uh, they, keep, they keep updating Tekken 7. Tekken 7 has got a little bit of Smash type going on where they continuously ad add uh, characters via DLC. So that's happened a lot. The, the seventh six, sexiest man in the world, SpongeBob. I mean, I can't argue with that. The second gen of PC. Yeah, like you would have to exclude uh, PC, I think. Uh, from a lot of those because PC is so it's a cheap way to always win it out, right? Yeah, Tekken 7. I actually have Tekken 7 on PS4. I'm bad at it, but I have it. And as always, everybody, thank you so much for hanging out. Don't uh don't be afraid to take screenshots, share, whatever you would feel like doing. Oh snap, holy smackdown. Oh my goodness, this is the announcement of Here Comes the Pain, I think. THQ has finally revealed its new SmackDown game for the PS2. Look forward to improved graphics, new storylines, and most importantly, the bra and panties matches when it hits this fall. Ooh, that did not age well. Ooh, that did not age well. Right? Yeah. That, that does not age well. Interesting. Oh, Monster Hunter. From the team that brought you Resident Evil Online comes Capcom's Monster Hunter. Four people team up online to hunt down massive monsters. Expect it sometime next year. I just came here. You said bra and panties matches wanting to. It's machine. What's happening, my friend? Reading this article and I mean, anybody that grew up as a wrestling fan, you know that wrestling has definitely changed. And in this point, that was not the case yet. Yeah, I remember playing that Monster Hunter and, and really enjoying it. Didn't quite understand it. I still don't. It's pretty cool. Oh, NFL Street. Kind of like NBA Street. Oh, boy. Okay, I'm afraid about this. Ooh. I'm afraid to read this. Ultimate Gaming Girl. How stereotypical is this? Let me see if I can make it a little bit easier to read for everybody. Ultimate Gaming Girl. It takes a lot to get some respect as a g girl in gaming. And it takes even more to be the ultimate gaming girl. With this in mind, we look at some of the PS2's finest ladies. Looks like Lara rated the top spot. Don't agree? Email us and tell us why. Uh, is that the shopkeeper from Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. So their criteria, their criteria, oh boy, I'm, I'm afraid to read this. Oh my good, oof. There's a couple things that would not be written this way now. Their criteria is beauty, brains, multiple outfits, broken nails, no problem. Kick ass, kicks ass big time, bendy. Bendy is a Nicole. I don't know if you're around, but this uh, I would like a woman's opinion on all of this. Yes, can handle a weapon or two. 
doesn't need silicone and made of plastic. Ooh. 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 This is rough. Where's Salma's though, right? Salma should absolutely be here. Well, Tifa makes sense that she wouldn't be here, right? Like, this is like the, the silent area of uh, all of this. Diana, what do you think about this? Man, this is rough. So, Laura runs, runs across all of them. Okay, who's Bendy? So, Laura's Bendy, Taki. Oh my god, this is just... Yeah, okay, Nicole, I'm gonna read it out loud again. Just like, let me know. How do you feel about women in gaming being ranked based on the following characteristics? Beauty, brains, multiple outfits, broken nails, no problem, kicks ass big time, bendy, can handle a weapon or two, doesn't need silicone or made of plastic. Oof. Like, I feel uncomfortable right now. Like, they, 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 they are committed to this. They are committed to this. Wow. We have made progress, people. If anybody ever doubts that we have made progress as a society, Bendy was a character. Bendy as in how bendable is the person. So... Make of that what you will. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just going to move on. I'm just going to move on. And and that is no longer... Yeah. It, like, made of plastic, right? Just a lot of this is just weird. Yeah, like, I, I can kind of see... Sir Meat, while well worthy were going, but you knew they were going with like the double meaning. You know exactly what they were going for, right? Juan, are you flexible? Always. Always. I I I'm like Neo in the Matrix. Give me a second to swap out to Neo uh, soundtrack here from uh, Wolf and Rain on Bandcamp. Make sure to show them some love. Give me a second. Okay, got that. Wait, what's everybody reading? Wait, Bo Booba? <laughs> okay, I'm like, what? This section would be canceled if it was made today, basically. So Dead or Alive Extreme Beach Volleyball is the author's favorite game, pretty much. Oh, okay, okay. I, I didn't get any emote. Okay, that's I was confused. I get the idea behind it, but what does made of plastic have to do with anything? You know what? Not to stereotype whoever was writing that. That person probably had not had most a lot of interaction with other human beings. Is there other? Okay, is this credited to anybody? Nope. Thankfully, they, yeah, they they knew they cannot commit. They just have a generic email there. Thing is, no, 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 no. They put two categories are doesn't need silicone, and another one is made of plastic. So they actually have them separate. It's really hard for. Okay, let let, let me let me show you here. Give me a second. Figure video. Look at that. Look at that. See, they legit have doesn't need silicone and made of plastic as two different options. So they, they, they doubled down on the idea. It's like, no, no, we are committed to this happening. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. Is this like Bob Burnquist? Thug. Thug. Can article about Thug. Uh, Laura Croft, I think, is the only one that checked off everything. Laura, Taki, Ivy, and Vicky from Army of Men. I don't know who she is. It's the last two check marks here. So you can never get a perfect score. Yeah. Yeah. Th this is like, this is why I love reading these magazines, though, because it's stuff that you're just like blown away how normal it was. Yeah. I Ivy was OP. 
a lot of people went to bed probably thinking about Ivy. Okay, now something, now for something completely different break out of, okay, well, I'm confused. Okay, it's like a cheat codes for James Bond, NFL, and Alien vs. Predator Extinction. Only the last one. That, yeah, that was something, people. Oh, here we go, Beyond Good and Evil. I know a lot of you uh, like that game. I I really haven't played it enough to be able to have an opinion. I did play it. Like, I did take pictures and all that, but... In Final Fantasy Unlimited, did anybody watch this series? I don't remember watching it, so I can't uh, really comment on that. Ivy was definitely more bendy than Laura. I mean, Ivy... Iv uh, Ivory. Ivy was insane with, like, the... The sword... Lasso sword. I, I don't even know how you call that. Resident Evil Dead Aim. Uh, I think I rented this one time, but I did not. I did not have the light gun, so I had to just use the uh, D-pad. Yeah, the whip sword. There we go. The whip sword. Wow, this is like an original ad for for Full Sail University. Holy crap! <clears throat> This is like way before they became who they are today. Wow, that's pretty amazing, actually. Babes and baddies. Uh-oh. I'm afraid at this point of like what I'm going to read here. Let's see here. Everything or nothing feels like a Bond film. Okay, okay. So it's just like a Bond article thing. The Snake Sword. What's this? Ooh, you know, I never, I only rented, I love watching Dot Hack. Did anybody actually watch the anime? Because I feel like a lot of people bring up the game, but it's like, yeah, the game is based on the series that's based on games. Kind of like that, kind of crazy. But I, I remember renting the first one. How did you join the university, this magazine? I wonder if that number still works. If somebody were to call that number, does it still work? Yeah, these, uh, these games were pretty awesome, from what I remember. And it's fascinating because they, they attempted to emulate, like, an MMO world. The Virginity is stronger than this magazine. Dude, the Virginity was stronger than almost, like, every gaming magazine. Like, they tried hard. And, and keep in mind, 2003, they toned that down. Like, when we eventually check out some, like, 97, 98, you know, your magazines, yeah. Call live on stream, no guts, no glory. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna put myself on that spot, but but maybe eventually, maybe eventually. DVD reviews, what the hell? Okay, they were stretching out the magazine here. This is interesting though, because we're seeing like a non-nostalgic review of Two Towers, which I mean I, I love all three films. Let's see here, um talks about the film, gives it four and a half stars. For the movie. It's been a couple of... Uh, who loves uh, Lord of the Rings? I haven't watched them in a, in a long time. I do have the... Uh, the uh, extended Blu-rays. But I haven't watched them in a very long time. Yeah, the 90s mags are even worse. Like, launch PS1 ads and all that. Ooh, it's rough. It gets rough. Yeah, I love me some Lord of the Rings. And I love those games. Sean Paul Echo. I, I I I get. I get what they were going for. I I, I see what. Do, do you all of you see what they were trying to do here? You know they can't. You know they can't show it, but they're kind of. You know. You know what I'm saying. They they went there. They went there. Lighters. You know. Clouds. Huh. <laughs> Creativity. I mean, my username is from the. I can't even say that name, Madras. S Sil Silma Silmaril Silmarillions. Am I saying it right? Oh, oh! I love this type of stuff. Okay, PS2 top 20 sales. Let's see here. So here we have number one. Oh my goodness. Tomb Raider the Angel of Darkness is number one. I am so sorry for everybody that bought that. I am so sorry. Decisions were made. 
Wow. Followed by Enter the Matrix, Hulk, NBA Street Volume 2, Midnight Club 2, that's a good game, Resident Evil Dead Aim, Return to Castle Wolfenstein, Ark the Lad, uh, Splinter Cell, Dynasty Warriors, Finding Nemo, Dot Hack Mutation, MVP Baseball, Dot Hack Infection, wow, two of them, two of them. Unlimited Saga, I did not like that game and I rented it. Uh, Tiger Woods, Vice City, Chess Master, DDR Max, and FIFA. Oh my goodness, there's a top 10 blockbuster rental section. I didn't even see that. I love this so much. Yeah, I'm like Angel of Darkness was abysmal. I remember returning it as a rental because I disliked it so much. If you're if you're not familiar, that's the book before the Lord of the Rings ser series. Well, today I learned that, my friend, thanks to you. Interesting, they still have PS1 sales. Check this out. Let me try and move this a bit so you can read it. Can you see that a little bit better now? So we have Final Fantasy Origins. I actually have that. Dragon Ball C Ultimate Battle 22. I'm sorry. Inuyasha. I never played that one. Final Fantasy uh, 7. Capcom. Keep in mind, this is in 2003. So it's interesting that in 2003, they were still having this section. I honestly am I'm surprised by that. Uh, they have... I'm trying to get it better. Nanko Museum, Final Fantasy Tactics, hell yeah. DDR Konamics, I had that one. I actually own that one. Beyblade, Bratz, and Mega Man X4. Not in my good Christian suburbs, wizard. Don't be <laughs> blowing those reefers. Oh, snap. Okay, so Japan, Fire Pro Wrestling, Metal Slug. A lot of games I did not know about. I'm very curious about the Blockbuster Top 10 rentals here. Man, I need to get this higher or something. Let's see here if I can have this be better to appreciate. Much better, right? So, Enter the Matrix, Hulk, Midnight Club 2. You can see just the pure domination. Not a single GameCube game there. Not a single GameCube game. All PS2. Dev Jam Vendetta. Oof. Brute Force, Splinter Cell. Man, not a single one. And then top 10 sales, all systems. Donkey Kong Country. Wow. Legit, the only Nintendo mention here is a GBA port. Look at that. Kind of wild to think about. Warcraft 3. Interesting, right? Then when you factor all the consoles in, PC definitely takes a top spot. Look, they have Neverwinter. Warcraft and Galaxies. And then number one, Tomb Raider. Man, that, no wonder they stopped making the Tomb Raider games for a bit. It's like, you can only imagine all that backlash from so many people that bought it. Enter the Matrix is not bad. It's legit not a bad game. Like, considering they could have put out crap and people would have bought it, it's surprisingly a good game, right? Yeah, no, it, like this says so much. The fact that. Actually, you know what's interesting? I just realized that it's like PlayStation Magazine does make open references to like other consoles. But even then, it's like GameCube. If anything, I would feel like Sony would be more comfortable highlighting GameCube stuff than Xbox. Yet it's like nowhere to be found here. Kind of insane. Kind of crazy, right? Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. I do not remember watching the movie, though I know I did, and I never played the game, so I can't really uh, talk about these. I don't know if anybody else ever played them. Oh, snap. First look at Champions of Noroth, uh, Realms of EverQuest. I played uh, EverQuest Online Adventures on PS2 before this came out. Which is what made me interested in checking out this game. Because I don't think I have played Baldur's Gate or anything like that. So this was my first real time at a Diablo-like game, I think. I honestly don't remember. That movie is great. Which... Oh, Crouching Tiger. Yeah. Genki was barely relevant even back then to the gaming scene at the time. Yeah, no, it's true. 
it, isn't it crazy though that now GameCube is like in right when for so long it was the third console and even then it was like ps2 xbox gamecube for a whole lot of people yeah this game was excellent it's basically like a top down top down diablo type stuff let's see here what do we have here driver three let's look up top look screens that look like stuntman interesting I don't think I ever played a driver game. I remember the very simplistic cover of the second one on PS1, but I never played it. Check this out. Fast and the Furious, same thing, never played it. Gran Turismo 4, I rented it. I think I got kind of burnt out on, on Gran Turismo after the third one. NASCAR Thunder. Corvette, so a lot of driving stuff in this section. Beat 'em up style champions of yeah no it's it's friggin' awesome yeah the GameCube had a lot of great stuff it's just Nintendo being Nintendo I think they, they just did a poor job of really letting people know why they should get it you know burned out nice pun oh yeah yeah like these are just chock full of good puns right driver of San Francisco's choice really that's for what is that for PS3. Wait, this is... So they changed the name of this game, right? Because we have this game for PS2. Uh, Sphinx and the Cursed Mummy, right? Or is this a sequel that never came out? Like, th th that's also a good point. The PS2 was so good. It was just amazing, right? But yeah, I do think it's the same game. Ratchet and Clank going Commando. Looking forward to playing the first one uh, later in the year. Tech, I remember always seeing the ads, but I never played it. Ramya, what's happening, my friend? Hey, Juan, once I meet one of the developers from Gran Turismo for PS2, she sent me a free copy to my house. She was very nice. Man, that's cool. Like, developers, like, when you, whenever you meet, you know, you can, you connect with developers. They are super friendly, generally speaking, of course. And how you doing, my friend? You doing good? I, I think I, I remember seeing the box art of the one you're talking about. Oh, my goodness. I never got this expansion. But uh, I did have the actual game, like the MMO. I even bought the keyboard on the PS2. And the game cards, they would actually come in like PS2 cases, which is like super not eco-friendly. So I would have like the end of the year, like just this stack of, uh, of PS2 cases. You have Final Fantasy X-2. I never played X-2. Never played it. Dot hack outbreak. RPG Maker 2, damn. I, I actually bought RPG Maker 1 on the, the PS1. And I didn't I never did a damn thing. The attitude back then was that the GameCube wasn't that the GameCube was fine though, was that it was pure trash. Yeah, no, because it's like I feel like even some of the best games that came out for it would already be a thing on PS2 or Xbox, right? Oh, check this out. Lovely pop-out. Magazines would always have this. Wow, so they completely changed the, the name. Like, how late into the game did they change this? Because this became Finks and the Cursed Mummy. But look at that lovely uh, design. Pretty fun game, and it's actually out on, on the Switch. They re-released it recently. Take a sip of water. Played it and beaten it. Tensu, what do, what do you think of Tensu? Buffy the Vampire Slayer Chaos Bleeds. I'm not sure if this is the one that I uh, rent at one time. Did they have multiple? I do have this game, by the way. Mission Impossible Operation Surma. But I haven't played it. I, I bought that in anticipation for like a future uh, video based on like I was going to do like a large initially like a year and a half ago. Most of my videos were going to be about PS2 games based on movies and shows, but I never got around to doing that. I do remember there was a lot of backlash with uh, 10 2. 
Yeah, the, the GameCube, it's like, it had its really solid games, you know? Like like a usual Nintendo console with like F-Zero, you know, Smash and all that. But then I feel like the fact that people didn't love Wind Waker, like, you know, the people that were expecting like the real graphics and the people that didn't like uh, Sunshine, it's like that's where you bought the Nintendo console for. And I feel like that was a lot of the disappointment behind the uh, console. I, I am eventually going to have to play that. Rogue Ops, uh, never played it. Couple games here in the corner. Here we have Haunted Mansion. Roadkill. Never played any of that. I'm great. Been waiting to get into one of your live streams and never get a chance. We have different times here in California. Love all your YouTube videos, and I love that you made the one where you talk about the PS3 digital store going away. No, thank you so much for the support, and a lot of people like the video. You know, looking forward to doing more stuff like that. Obviously, it's not like I'm not a news channel, so I'll only cover stuff that I feel you know strongly about. But I had a little bit more fun, you know, like standing up, grabbing the microphone. Uh, I do feel a lot more comfortable talking like that with video. So that's going to be a thing that I hope eventually almost all my videos like the stand in part or me is me standing up. I mean, that's kind of what you do standing, right? But luckily you were here, man. Happy to have you by here. Gladiator Sword of Vengeance. Uh, I remember in G4 or Tech TV, they would have a lot of ads about this game. That's about all I remember. I'd rather watch you than Pew PewDiePie, that's for sure. I mean, man, you know, I never really watched PewDiePie. Like, I never... I, I guess just when he became popular, I had outgrown that type of content. You know what I mean? And yeah, I am getting some frame drops, some internet problems. Hopefully, you can still hear me. Uh, all of this, as I mentioned before, will be available as an archive at Player Juan Place. So that way, if, uh, you know, you want to see this in better quality or something, that's going to be an option. The Hobbit, I never played it. Seems like an Ocarina of Time clone, kind of. Right? Yeah, 360, though, it kind of makes sense because Microsoft has been a lot better about, like, backward stuff. So I guess that's why. This is another game I would love to have in my collection, but... Yeah. Yeah, right? By the way, one of my upcoming videos uh, is going to be a very interesting thing. It's going to be about my first PlayStation memories. And it's not just going to be me. It's going to be a couple of people hanging out in that video. So I'm looking forward to putting that together. Well, if want to have to go, need to do some stuff here. No problem, my friend. Thank you so much for uh, stopping by, Mr. James. King Lee con los 11 months. 11 meses. Maximo is another series I, I never understood. Like, I I regret having the first one and trading it in. And I feel like I would appreciate these games more now. Starsky and Hutch, Hutch never never saw the movie, so no attachment to the game. SWAT never played that. Did anybody ever play this one? They're speculating here. I don't know if that became true or not, that in this game, you could actually unlock the original or Turtles in Time, or the original arcade game. I did it with super good. Okay, nice. No, because visually I like the cell shaded style from Konami. Gonna have to look that up. I don't know how much it's going for. Maximo is amazing. You can buy it at the PS3 digital store. Nice. Yeah, I've seen like the physical copy goes for like 15 bucks for the first one. Second, not 15 bucks though. Goblin Commander Unleash the Horde. I have no idea what that is. Never seen that one. Warhammer, I believe there's a demo for this one in the disc that came with this uh, magazine, but I never played it. Lupin the Third. I regret not playing this because I love to watch Lupin. That, now, that's an anime that cannot be recreated today. Anybody that's watched Lupin, I mean, yeah. Talk about naughty, right? Oh, okay, so here's some, some really good stuff. Man, back-to-back -back almost. Uh, Mafia, never played it, but I know Nicole loves it. 
And I'd actually love to play the uh, Enhanced Edition Remake or whatever that came out. Um, because uh, I love that type of game. Kill Switch is freaking awesome. It was really good cover shooter. And it doesn't get enough recognition. It's like a very short game. I'm not surprised the 360 shop is still up at all. Phil Spencer actually cares about the library, unlike Jim Ryan, unfortunately, right? True Crime is yet another game that, that I regret not playing. And I would love to uh, eventually play this one. This came out in 2003. And didn't this get a sequel or something like that? I forget. But over here, man, this, is, this was my jam for a long time. Budokai 2. I was not a big fan of the first one. I know a lot of people say uh, the third is the best, I would agree, but two is pretty damn solid. Lots of regrets, one. Yeah, no, because it's around this point that real realistically, 2003 is like we were economically extremely tight. We, you know, we went through a lot of stuff around this point in our, in our house, so really, like, I was able to rent a couple of games, but as far as purchasing... We really, I, I pretty much played the same games all year. Like when SmackDown eventually came out, you know, I played the SOCOMs and stuff. But I really didn't get a lot more because I, I couldn't afford it. Imagine wanting to play old games. Right? So stupid. It's like older games. Psst. Yeah, no, Budokai, like, the, I freaking love... I think Budokai really did popularize cell sheet of graphics. Like, they weren't the first ones to do it. But obviously, you know, DBZ is such a popular IP. Sega Ages. Kind of crazy. This is still going today. Like, the Sega Ages brand is still a thing even on, on Switch. Sports. Sports. Hard pass on me for that. Robin Hood, Defender of the Crown. Published by Capcom. Never played this one. Seems, seems like a decent hack and slash or something. Mega Man X7. Now, I never played this one. Just because I really wasn't into like the Mega Man X games too much. But I remember people hating this one. Suffering, I am extremely sure I rented it. Pretty sure I rented this one a couple times. Ooh, Rising Sun. This is a great game. Uh, I really love playing this game. I thought the graphics were top-notch. It worked out pretty well. Like, it was very smooth. It felt like a big deal. It felt like a really big deal. And the online was a little bit small. I think it was like 8-player online or something. Also, do you know uh, Aegis is... Wow, I never got that. Of course it is. Like, I never... If you didn't say that, I would not have gotten, like... That's what... So they're just really saying Sega Sega. My goodness. My goodness. You know, Medal of Honor, man, it's sad. Like, Call of Duty came out and just destroyed it. It really just tore it apart. And I don't think it ever recovered. Wow, look at this ad. Spicy hot laxative. Okay. Because even the strongest heroes need help sometimes. I, re I remember playing this one. And I love the gameplay. I thought the characters were too obnoxious for me. And that probably hasn't changed. It's just my personal preference, right? Like, I love... Uh, turn-based tactics games like that you know final fantasy tactics is, is, tactics is one of my favorite games of all time but just something about the characters i thought was a little bit too obnoxious and yeah yeah right yannick like meat just blew our brains out more rising sun ramia thank you for the prime sub that is awesome thank you thank you so much my friend wow that is awesome thank you and remember, you can uh, send me a private message with uh, a possible image that can be part of your uh, sub jewel case as a thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, my friend. Come on, dude. You know, I play Prinny. 
on PSP. You you write that. Holy crap! Like, I think the pretty do you want to be a hero or whatever is just impossibly difficult. Like my goodness. And yeah, everybody, like, don't be shy to join the Discord. You know, we talk about a whole lot of stuff there. So thank you so much, and thank you, Yannick, for uh, the link, my friend. Yeah, I think I, I need to update all that stuff. Like, I need to update... Uh, for those that want to follow me on Instagram, there is a... By by my same Twitch handle, Mr. Player Juan. Uh, I'm there, and I do... Uh, post stuff that I otherwise wouldn't sometimes talk about on the channel, stuff like that. So it's MR Player Juan. I think it's in the, in the uh, tabs as well. I'm not sure. So we're getting to the end of the magazine here, actually. Man, this is like uh, one of the more expensive PS2 games. The Futurama game. And I never played it. And it's because I was under the impression that it, because it's based on on a show, it was going to be bad. Uh, it was going to be bad, and I was obsessed with the show. And yeah, like you can see, it actually got a two and a half star rating. And even if it's like a mediocre game, it visually looks just like the series, which was pretty damn impressive, right? And thank you again so much, Ramia. Any subs, any bits go directly right back to supporting the channel. Um, there's like a weird thing happening sometimes with the webcam. I don't know if this webcam's going out or not or something. Eventually, as I mentioned, I would love to get a 4K camera. This is a pretty older camera because obviously you can't, you know, fully read the text. And I would love for all of you to be able to do that. But all in due time, my friends, right? All in due time. Never like games based on shows except Simpsons Hit and Run. Oh, yeah, I know, like, Hit and Run and, and uh, Road Rage, I know they're not the same game, but they were both pretty good. I am surprised. Like, what has kept them from re-releasing that game? Seriously. Like, especially on Switch. Dude, you wouldn't even have to do a whole lot to get people to buy that. I, I think you'd you just make it HD, honestly. Yeah, thank you for that, Yannick. Thank you so much, man. And Soul Calibur, I actually own both. No, I own, I still have a copy of Virtual Fighter 4 Evolution. I never was able to figure it out how to play. I still have yet to repurchase a copy of Soul Calibur 2. I would like to add that to my collection eventually. They literally got sued by Rockstar for that game. Really? I didn't know. Is there a video about that? Is there a video about the history of Hit and Run? Legally speaking, not talking about like the development itself, because I would love to watch that. That that is true. I mean, like now that everything is like under the hood of like Disney and everything, it's it's kind of like tricky, right? Another game I would like to get is the Simpsons game. Yeah, it's there, and I also have a, another website I need to update. Uh, and all my links page, but I forgot the URL. I gotta get better at all that. And speaking of the devil, I mean, here's Simpsons Hit and Run. Four stars. And 2003 was a solid year for gaming. At least, like, I have a lot of positive memories. As I mentioned, I didn't buy, like, a whole lot of games around that time. But I do have positive experiences of playing some of these games years after. And uh, here's where the demo came in. So I mentioned before that this uh, magazine comes with a demo disc. It actually comes here. And then you can see, uh, you see all these markings. That's what was embedded into the actual disc. So I had to Q-tip it out with a WD-40 and all that. Right, that's a good idea, actually. That's a damn good idea. I can also do like playerhuan.com slash discord just to make it easier. Like, I, I'm going to do all that. The, the hell was that? Am I the only one that saw that? Am I the only one that saw that? What the hell was that? We, we got, I, I don't know what the hell happened there. I think this camera's going bad. Yeah, this camera's going bad or something. It's a pretty old camera. So yeah. Yeah, none of this is real, people. 
Yeah, I, I guess we're in the Matrix or something. Oh, I got it backwards. It was Road Rage they got sued for, and it was Sega who sued them. Yeah, because Road Rage was legit just like Crazy Taxi, right? Ooh, I love this part. Wow, check out this game screen, but it was $150, and this was how big? 5.4 game screen. Okay, they are just murdering this review-wise, saying it looks horrible. It makes PS2 games look like PS1 games. Oh, it's Mad Cats, of course. I missed it. What was it? No, like, it, it, it got really flickery on screen for a second there. Let's see here. Uh, Predator Wireless. Oh, Pelican made some pretty good accessories. I did have a couple of Pelicans... Uh, Pelican accessories. Never owned this one. Forty bucks for a wireless controller. But yeah, uh, Mac Cats. I I know Mac Cats eventually redeemed themselves a little bit, but that was not the case around this time. Okay, so we have some tricks and all that stuff. Any more accessory stuff? I love seeing that. Ooh, this is rough. So they did like a legit small tutorial thing. For uh, Tomb Raider Angel of Darkness. This may be... Ha I think this... You know, people poke fun of like Superman 64. I didn't have enough access to the internet when that game came out. But I do vividly remember not only knowing I was playing a bad game. But I remember seeing like going to GameFAQs and all those websites. And uh, seeing people just like crap on this game. And thank you for the clipping, yeah. And you can see, like, they didn't have capture cards back then. You can tell these are just legit screenshots of, like, taken with a phone or something. You can see the lines from, like, a digital camera. Like, cheap digital cameras from that time. You can see it's, like, cropped off the top here. And by the way, like, I really would like to do more streams like this throughout the year. So if there's a particular year that all of you would like me to go to, uh, let me know because uh, that way I can I can actually look out if there's any cheap deals on eBay for magazines or, or anything like that. I don't really have a lot and I'm not just going to like binge buy a lot of magazines, right? Mainly I'm looking for like game of the year stuff like the, Dece the December edition magazines that are usually pretty beefy like October, November... Can you recommend a good PC controller? Um, the best ones for me, honestly, is the Xbox One controller. Like the Xbox One controller, that's what I use for PC gaming. Uh, that's the one that I love. So that's the one that I would recommend because you can just plug it in and it works just fine. And the good thing with PC is that most games recognize that controller specifically. So even on screen, you'll see the icons, right? There's other controllers that maybe they're comfortable, but then on screen, you won't actually see the the A and B, and that can get very confusing. 95, uh, Chrono Trigger's released. Oh, man, 95 would be a damn good year, and I don't have, I don't have, uh, I don't have any 95 Max, so I can look that up for sure. Some so caliber codes. Sound. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm playing this th later in the year. Nope, nope, nope. So come. Wait. Oh, was it because it came with the Bluetooth headset? Why was SOCOM 2 60 bucks? SOCOM 1. Why was this 60 bucks? It came with the Bluetooth. No, not the Bluetooth. It, it came with a crappy wireless uh, it came with a crappy USB headset. Right, right. I forgot about that. Like the... Wow, I forgot about that completely. Wow. And that thing broke like nobody's business. It was awful. Man, Medal of Honor Frontline. Man, I don't have that one. I don't think I own Frontline. And I would like to own that. I would like to own that, actually. Series X controller has a better D-pad, though. Oh, yeah, I know. Uh, I would love to get an Elite eventually or something like that. 
uh, Logitech PC controller for 20 on Amazon. Like Logitech is, if you're not going with like main brand Xbox um, uh, Sony, Logitech is a pretty safe bet. Rest assured though, once again, you're not, you're going to run into some compatibility issues with some games that won't automatically detect that. The benefit with Xbox is that you plug that thing in 90% of the times it's going to work. There's a demo of this one. So something that I would like to do, let's uh, just make sure there's nothing sexy that we're missing out here. Okay, so give me a second here. Something that I would like to do for a couple of minutes is actually go on maybe eBay or, uh, let's see here. Uh, well, first of all, thank you for being part of the uh, this edition of Retro Reads. Like, what did everybody think of like going back to this uh, magazine once again? This is from September 2003 with Medal of Honor Rising Sun in the cover. Uh, I was very happy that I saw like there's not a lot of like um, amazing reveals or anything like that, right? I think 2003 this generation had already started so there's not like a big hype like the biggest hype thing that we saw here is the speculation about the upcoming psp but there wasn't really anything else right that you're like oh man you know we're getting a ps3 coverage and we saw that in one of the previous magazines so here it was more like hey the generation's running but uh, i i like to see this type of stuff so hopefully all of you uh enjoyed it as well and friends, that was my pretty awesome session on Twitch checking out this magazine from 2003. I really did enjoy doing it uh, live because if I was just recording offline, think of all the conversations that we had there that would have never come to fruition if I was just recording by myself. So I cannot wait uh, to do something like this in the future. So the good thing is that anything that I do like that will end up right here on this channel in a 1080p, the best quality possible. But if you want to be part of the conversation, then consider following me at twitch.tv slash Mr. Player Juan. So up until next time, thank you for watching and listening and take care, everybody.